Shalom and blessings. Greetings to all saints. Of course, as you know, we'll always say that this is the day that Yahweh has made. And we are encouraged to rejoice and to be glad in it. And that's exactly what I always do. My mode of thinking is always that I must be joyful and I must rejoice in the fact that I'm a child of Yahweh. I belong to Yahweh, that He has chosen us as saints before the foundation of the world, as we talk about today. And it's a joy to be able to speak to you uh, from that platform. So I'm never coming to you with much sorrow because I understand that Yahweh has chosen us in Messiah before the foundation of the world. Blessings, blessings, and shalom to you. Uh, if you can hear me clearly and see clearly, please let me know uh, so that we can proceed. We normally do the audio visual check, and as long as they're both fine, then I ask you to please share with this broadcast with someone who you know is always here but does not normally receive notification. All right, blessings and shalom. What a wonderful day. I am bubbling with joy to be able to speak to you at this time. Glory to Yahweh. Praise be to His holy name. Thank you so much. Clear from Florida. Good. <laughs> Yahweh is so faithful. Yahweh is merciful. I am, as you can see, truly overjoyed to know the mind of our Father concerning us. Amen. He remains faithful. Hallelujah. Praise be to Yahweh. Great. So our audio is good. And so is our video quality. Excellent. Shalom and blessings. We are in the letter that Joel wrote to the church at Ephesus, the Ephesian saints. Please take note. Um, and we're studying that. We may be in that for quite a while. When you have been chosen. And today you're encouraged to rethink. And think is emphasized. Amen. If you're new to the broadcast or new to my page, the term Shalom, as you see the saints continue greeting me with it, or we greet each other with that. Shalom speaks to there being that peace that comes from Yahweh that is beyond human or the average human being's ability to understand. Shalom means that you are convinced and convicted about the fact that there is absolutely everything that you need within you as, been, as would have been given by Yahweh. Shalom and blessings. You are convinced that there is absolutely nothing wrong in reference to your Father's will and purpose. Good to see you, Prophetess and others. Shalom means that whatever you're facing today, you are convinced that that is entirely within the will of our Father. And because of that, we have this peace. It does not mean that there is not war around you. It does not mean that there is not chaos and confusion and, and, and many troubles around you. What it means is, none of it is found within you. And I'm always eager to issue that caveat and that understand that clarity to you as saints. And those of you who are new, you must be reminded continually as to what shalom is and who gives shalom to us. And as a result, when we greet each other with shalom, we are announcing in essence a reminder. And we are also announcing a blessing because it's great favor to be given that about which I just spoke in that you are certain that it doesn't matter what is going on around you it is always well hallelujah so we are in the church at Ephesus the letter that was written to them and you are encouraged today to rethink The fortunate thing for many of you who are saints indeed is that you have been favored by Yahweh to repent, which means to change what happens up here. To repent speaks to having an absolute change of thinking, or what is called a paradigm shift. 
you cannot repent and possess the mind you had in error and in Jesus. You cannot repent and still possess the convictions that you've had while you were in error. And this teaching and others along this line will expose to you how much more you have to rid yourself of certain processes in reference to your mind. Because some of you, your mind would have not been entirely renewed. And that's an instruction. In Romans 12, you are instructed to renew your mind. But T. Shalom, Nai Shalom to you and others. There's a direct instruction for you to renew your mind. You have to, as a people, revisit the manner in which you think. I will show you from Scripture, Ephesians 1. And I read from verse 1 because we may do the entire letter. Not today, though. In Ephesians 1, it, 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 it reads for, from verse 1. From Shaul, by Yahweh's will, an emissary of the Messiah, Yeshua. The very first line, the greeting, speaks to who Shaul was. And by whose will he's an emissary or an apostle. That in itself, the very first four or five words of this, this letter disqualifies most people who call themselves apostles. Because number one, you do not know who your God's name is. You say you can call him what you want. And no one who is sent, apostolos in Greek means to send, ashiliach in Hebrew means a messenger, or one who is sent to do something. So it's impossible for you to be sent by someone as significant as the sovereign ruler, Yahweh, and you do not know his name. Or you're not convicted about his name. Or you're not convinced as to whom he is. But you are saying that you're sent by him, but you call him what you want. Can you name any ambassador, which is another word for apostle, or a synonym? Can you name any ambassador on this planet who's sent by a leader that, whose name they don't know? Can you name any ambassador on this planet who is on a mission to serve a nation and they do not know the requirements or the established protocols of that nation so they do not know who sent them they do not know the name of the leader that's sending them so they're going out with a credential as you call it and when ambassadors are, are assigned or posted is the term you use in diplomacy when they're posted they have to go with a credential in hand to say that this president this prime minister this ruler Sister Pell, good to see you uh, Pell. this person sent me to you as a representative of him and that nation so how can you have people in church today of course in, in the era called Jesus who is saying that you could call God whatever you want he doesn't care but they call apostles of what of whom you are an emissary, you are an apostle, you are an ambassador sent by someone to do something. And in this case, Shaul knows clearly who is the person that, have, that would have willed him to be this emissary. So he's not somebody who says, I have decided to be an apostle. He's not someone who says, I would like to be an apostle. He's not someone who said, I chose to be. He's saying that I was commissioned by the will of another individual. So first of all, no human being can will themselves to be an apostle. That's, that's an apostle of the devil, which is what most of you are in any case. When you're an apostle of the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, of, of, by Yahweh's will, you have not been chosen, you have not chosen to do it. You have, been, you have been chosen to do it. You would have not chosen to be. You have been chosen to be. And by that choosing of Yahweh's, you are... In, the, in this case, I'm speaking about me here and others. Because how do I know I was chosen to be this, this emissary? It's not my will. I never wanted to be this. I never had a desire to do anything close to this. My studies are not in this area because I had no interest in this. But when it pleased the Father, 
Yahweh, he chose me to do. What's the other sign? The other thing is that in his choosing, he also equipped me with the ability, hear this, to love being despised. Somebody needs to type that. In choosing me to do what I'm doing now, to be an apostle, I have been also given the ability to love being despised by men. You might as well hear me this afternoon. There is no bone in my body that gets discouraged, that gets uh, saddened when people hate me for telling the truth. None. So I'm telling you all, Jesus clown, stop wasting your time because you're the one who gets high blood pressure and, and gets sick and can't breathe. I am unconcerned. The truth is, I actually rejoice at the things you say about me because it's evidence of the fact that I have been chosen to represent absolute truth. So that's why I cannot take the risk you take and speak as stupidly as you do to say that it doesn't matter what you call somebody who give, who give, who give the name as one who should be honored. Why did Yeshua in teaching the disciples said, you want to learn how to pray? Let's begin by learn, teaching how to pray here. Our Father, which is Abba, who is in heaven, there is Shemaim, hallowed, or may your name be kept holy. Why? What name? If the name is to be kept holy and reverence, what is the name? There has to be something that's being kept holy here. What is the name that you're keeping holy? That's a, you, you say it's the Lord's Prayer, which is not, but fine. You want to say it's the Lord's Prayer, so I'm asking you, what is in the prayer? Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be, or may your name be kept holy. Which name? What is the name that you're keeping holy? You can call it what you want, so you, keep, you can keep whatever name... Anything you call him, you keep that holy? Does that make sense to you stupid people? And you following these idiots in pulpits thinking it's okay, it's not okay. It is never okay to submit yourself to something that's stupid. Whenever you are chosen as a saint, you have been kept. Oh, blessings you, Sister Diane. Look at that. Blessings and much love, Sister Zola and others are there with you. I am so happy that this happens every so often at your house. When you have been chosen by your Father in heaven, who is the Holy One of Israel, you would have been chosen and equipped to be hated. And it does not bother you. Now, of course, you have to be taught that. You have to understand this before you can move forward. That's why I said, rethink. Oh, that's good, brother, brother Paul. Unless you're stupid too. That's the only reason, reason you can follow stupid people to, to that extent. We have been elected and appointed for hatred. And it's not an issue. So from the very first line in the, in the letter to the church at Ephesus, he said... He's an emissary by Yahweh's will and he's an emissary of Yeshua. So it's not a case in which, thank you for that, Sister Sandra, it's not a case in which Shaul chose to do anything. And there are two significant names in the first line. He's an emissary by the will of Yahweh or he's by Yahweh's will, he's an emissary of whom? Of the Messiah Yeshua. So Yeshua didn't choose him out of the clear blue sky. Yeshua is doing the will of the Father. Verse 2, or verse 1 still. Who is he writing to? Hear this now. Verse 1 still. From Shaul to Yahweh's people. Did you hear that? We're in verse 1. To Yahweh's people living in Ephesus. And he's going to clarify it further. This is your Bible as you call it. Shaul is writing, Ephesus we're in, the church of Ephesus, the letter to the Ephesians. What did he say? He's from Shaul, the emissary, to Yahweh's people living in Ephesus. He was specific. Therefore, those of you smart ones, read your Bible. 
If you cannot comprehend something this simple, close it. Because it, was never, it never said that everybody in this letter here is an apostle. And whatever it said is, 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 is for the whole world. It is specific to Yahweh's people. Therefore, everything in this letter is addressed to one set of people. It is addressed to one group of people. They are called Yahweh's people. Living in Ephesus. We go further. That is, he's clarifying now. We're in verse 1. Those who are trusting in the Messiah by name Yeshua. Did you hear that? Not Jesus. Because when this is written, the word Jesus does not exist. That's basic history for you. When this letter was written, English language did not exist. Therefore, he never said Jesus. Never. And if he knew who the Messiah was, he would not try to find a new name for him. Just so people can understand something. That, again, is absolutely stupid reasoning. Who is the letter of Ephesians written to? It's written to those who are Yahweh's people, those who are trusting in Messiah Yeshua. So when we today read it, there may be aspects of it that will be applicable to us, but there may be some aspects of it that are not. And I want you to hear me clearly here. Oh, that's good, Sister Pedro. That's wonderful. Exactly. As long as you're living in Yeshua, <laughs> my life before Yahweh, I'm not engaging in any pointless conversations regardless of assumptions, etc. I love it. I live only for Yahweh. Hallelujah. Bless you. Reading from Ephesians, Jesse. Ephesians chapter 1. Now, if you are not trusting in Yeshua, then you are not Yahweh's people. If you trust in Jesus, you are not Yahweh's people. If you are offended, it still doesn't make you Yahweh's people. If you are otherwise convinced that you can trust in whoever you want, it does not make you Yahweh's people. Because the content of this text that is called my reference point speaks to the fact that only those who are trusting in Yeshua by name belong to Yahweh. No one else. See, if you trust in Jesus and Yeshua, you're not Yahweh's people because you've added something to what is written. Hence, I say, because some of you are afraid to type this thing, but you can say it, you can tag my name to it. Everyone who trusts in Jesus is lost. Everyone, everyone, I don't care who you are, who trusts in Jesus is lost. Everyone who trusts in Jesus is lost. I mean, Ephesians, Deborah, <laughs> not, not Philippians. Everyone who trusts in Jesus is lost. Are you offended? You're still lost. You don't care? You're still lost. Your pastor told you something else? You are still lost. Your mother trusted in Jesus? She's lost. Your father's a good man who trusts in Jesus? He's lost. Your grandfather trusts in Jesus? He's also lost. Your husband trusts in Jesus? He's lost. Shalom, Brother Julian. Good to see you. Brother Brent, shalom, you never late. Since I always arrive on time. <laughs> Why am I saying this? Because it's written. The only people who consider the Yahweh's are those who trust in Yeshua. And the name is written. Your bishop is lost. Your apostle is lost. Your right reverend doctor apostle is even more lost. Your past is lost. Your church mothers are all lost. The, 
listen, this is important here. Remember what I said to you. Remember what the topic is right here? Rethink. When you're chosen, rethink. You cannot be chosen and still have comfort in thinking that another name can save anybody. It means you're not saved. You cannot believe the Bible and disbelieve it at the same time. I do not look at anyone who trusts in Jesus as a safe person. None of them. Regardless of who they are, they're all lost. Because the scripture said it. And I said to you, this is history, uh, history and linguistics. Basic. If English language did not exist when this was written, it's obviously never said Jesus. Because you said, Mr. Pastor, that Jesus is an English name. And if you said that, then obviously if English did not exist, then by all means... He didn't say that. That's good, Corinne. Jesus himself is lost. And it's not even a person. It's an it. It's a thought. It's an ideology. A concocted image. Verse 2, grace to you, to you who, there we go again, is from Shaul to the saints at Ephesus. So he's saying grace to you. Grace to whom? Grace to whom? To the saints at Ephesus who are trusting in Yeshua. And shalom from Yahweh our Father and the Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Verse 3 is where our focus is a bit more engaged. Praise be to Yahweh. Praise be to Yahweh. Father of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Yet some of you said, that Jesus is the Father. I don't think some of you have the ability to reason to save your lives. And you want to debate scripture with me. The Father of our Lord Yeshua cannot be Yeshua. A two-year-old can understand what I said to you. And some of you have major biblical arguments and seek to come into my inbox and on my page I have stupid encounters that make you somehow feel as though you're so smart. If the scripture states, Ephesians 1 verse 3, Praise be to Yahweh, who is Yahweh, Father of our Lord Yeshua. He's the Father of Yeshua, which means he's not Yeshua. It is written. I didn't write it. But your argument comes from a very silly place because you don't understand you don't understand the English you speak, yet you want to argue it. If I said that you and I are one, are you me? If I say that we're one, does that mean that you're me and I'm you? Or it speaks to some, some unity here that goes beyond person. This is basic, this is elementary reasoning and still people who are preachers and, and, and the like think that you're qualified to make these arguments to sound important. When Yeshua said that I and the Father are one, he didn't mean that I'm the Father. It means they are united in purpose and thought. They function as a unit called deity rethink so here he says Shaul praise be to Yahweh father of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah who in the Messiah 
has blessed us. This is where we're talking about today now. Who in the Messiah has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven. All our Father, the Father of Yeshua, has blessed us. Us who? Now he's speaking to the apostle here himself and the saints. So the apostles and the saints have received a blessing from Yahweh. And it says every spiritual, he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven. Now, when you've been chosen, and I'm here to address something that I've spoken to quite often. I know Pastor Stephen touching it as well. When you have been chosen by Yahweh, there is a blessing that you receive. Bless you, brother children. Bless you, teach. Listen, this blessing that you receive is not in material goods. Yet, many of you would have been cultured in error called Jesus to believe that you have to acquire many things to be considered a blessed person. And then pastors will take you to Abraham and say, look, Abraham had a lot of stuff, so he's blessed. And you're programmed to acquire things to feel as though you've been blessed. But the scripture is clear. That Yahweh, when he blessed anyone, he said, and I've taught you this before, whenever Yahweh blesses an individual in scripture, he always said something to them. He always empowered them to do something. He always bestowed upon them the ability to do and to be. Yet in this church age, many of you are going to banks for loans so you can appear to be blessed. Many of you feel that because your account is not showing its particular figure, you are not a blessed person. Sister Jill, good to see you day hard. No. We are here to rethink. I'm here to encourage you to change your processes this afternoon. The scripture says that you have been blessed, blessed by Yahweh with every spiritual blessing. When I checked the meaning of this word spiritual uh, blessing, I had to come to you again. Because usage is important. The word blessed in one case can mean something totally different in another instant. In this case, it means that Yahweh would have empowered you to prosper. Get that? It means that Yahweh would have empowered you to prosper in every spiritual or with every spiritual ability to prosper. What does that mean? Your most significant and only area of focus of prosperity has to be spiritual. Somebody said they have bad connection on their end. I hope not. If it's so, let me know so I can make adjustments, please. Your, it's good? Great. Your only focus as a saint of the Lord Yeshua of Yahweh's, your only attention has to be on what is spiritual. And I'll, I'll, free, I'll free half of you all this afternoon with this, by Yahweh's grace. When you, when, you, when you understand that Yahweh has equipped you with every spiritual blessing in heaven, you can't miss this. Yahweh would have given you the ability to prosper to the maximum Spiritually. Okay. Bless you, Mel. Yahweh would have empowered you to prosper to the maximum spiritually. Watch this. Yet I'm certain there are many of you who would 
go on quests to fast and pray so that you can become spiritually strong. And you go on prayer lines. Yes, I know you. Because you want to develop spiritually. And you feel as if you're not strong spiritually, so you need some help. Do you know what you're saying? I'll say to you again what the scripture states about you, the saint. The saints have been blessed, which is to be empowered to prosper. Which, with every spiritual blessing that's available to you in heaven. Yet, you are on earth saying that you have to fast. And you have to do certain things because you don't feel as if you are spiritual as you should be. Rethink. Hear me. Your spiritual state has nothing to do with you. You can type that. My spiritual state has nothing to do with me. It is not about you. You were, you were given something. Yahweh endowed you with something to equip you to function to the ultimate limit. So what's the problem? The problem is up here. The problem is that you've never been taught these things in error. You've been taught that if you're hollering, you're screaming, you're shouting, and you say ba 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 ba, then it means that you're holy and you're spiritual. And if you pray for two hours or three hours a day, then you're spiritual. If you act deep and cold and you don't smile at people, then you're spiritual. Saints, you have been given every, every single thing you can conceive. You can't even think to the extent that you have it. So let me, let me, let me help some of you further if I can. And it's not a stupid question I'm asking. And I'm not trying to trick you either. But it's going to reinforce something you need to make to trigger your thinking to hold the, a, a, another dimension, another place, another plane of thinking. <laughs> Bless you, Mama Ward. It's okay. Look at this. The scripture states, and I'll read it for you again. Bless be Yahweh. Bless be Yahweh, Father of our Lord Yeshua. Look at this. Who in Messiah in Yeshua, in Yeshua, has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven. Look at this. Where is Yahweh? In reference to the seat of his power. He's spirit, he's everywhere. But I'm asking in reference to the seat of his power. Where is Yahweh? Let me see will be the first answer. It's not a trick question because all of you know the answer. But it's for a purpose I'm asking this question. Where is Yahweh? Where is the seat of his power? Good. Okay. Have you typed it? Where is the seat of his power? Where is Yahweh in reference to the seat of... Where is it? In reference to the seat of his power. Yeshua said... Heaven. Yeshua said, I have to ascend to my father. The accuser of the brethren in Revelation was before Yahweh, accusing the night he was cast down from heaven. You can saw this as happening, as would happen. Why? Because the seat of Yahweh's power, in reference to where he is, not confining him to a particular... Location. Good. Heaven. Great. All right. Where is Yeshua seated? Where is Yeshua the Messiah seated? What is Sancho saying here? Wisdom tells you that you don't have to beg for someone else's will to you exactly. <laughs> The niece is some of us aren't smart. Yes, you're smart. Good. Yeshua is seated at the right hand of the Father of majesty and high. Good. So both of them are in the same place. Excellent. Great. All right. Good. We have been positioned, positioned in heavenly places. We spoke there last week. Set, seated. We are seated in heavenly places in Yeshua. Okay, good. You, the scripture tells you that you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heaven. Look at this. 
So the blessing that you're walking in in earth, the ability to prosper spiritually in earth, right now, is not coming from anything that you do in earth. Wake up somebody. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heaven. You're, we are talking here in the earth. You're typing in earth. But everything you're doing now has no effect as to what you have been given in reference to heaven. Yahweh would have empowered you from a place to prosper to an extent or to a degree that nothing in earth can stop you. I hope I can help somebody today. Because I'm building you to a point whereby I'll rebuke some of you in a minute. But that's all right. Celebrate for now. Yahweh has given you every single thing you can think about spiritually. To the degree that nothing on earth can stop you from walking in that condition. So if Yahweh is seated in heaven, you reference the place of authority. Yeshua is seated in heaven beside the Father. Okay, great. Look at this, please. And you are also seated in Yeshua. Then what on the face of earth, this earth, can cause you to become dysfunctional? as a spiritual being, where you have to go to an altar and ask to be strengthened spiritually. Watch this. If you are given everything in heaven, from heaven, by the seat of authority in that environment, so wherever Yahweh is, he said, in this environment, I give you every single thing you need to prosper spiritually. How is it that on earth you asking to be stronger spiritually? Do you understand what you're doing to yourself? Do you understand what you're doing to yourself? How can earth provide you with more than what heaven has already given you? How can earth provide you with more than what heaven has already given to you? Do you know what you're doing to yourself? You obviously don't. So I'm saying to you today, rethink. Your spiritual blessing is not a feeling. Your spiritual blessing is not how you feel. It's a divine empowerment that you have that you are capable in the earth under any circumstance. You are capable of receiving from heaven truth to make you function. And you tell me you have to go to some altar for that? Which altar can give that, which altar can give that to you? Which preacher can lay hands on you and make you function like that? I'm not in your house. But I can sense that for some of y'all, this is almost an explosion happening in your head. In your spirit, as you call it. You are being awakened to a degree that you've never thought you would in your lifetime. Some of you will never text me again with any issues that you have. Because you'll understand clearly what I'm talking to you about. So, how, do, how, how does this function? Yahweh ensure that the position and environment whereby it is hostile... It is, it is mean, it is evil, it is targeted towards hating you at all costs. Why? Because when you are in the earth and all of these evil things are being hurled at you and happening around you, it is a reminder to you that you are given something to function in an environment that will never affect who you are spiritually. If ever around you weakens you to the degree by you can't function spiritually, you need to reassess what's happening up here. Because your position in a hostile environment to prove to you that the environment does not determine your spiritual state. You have been given the power to function, not from earth. From heaven. You going before some man-made structure in earth called a church, asking some pastor to pray for you so you can grow spiritually. Stop going to these stupid people. I'm telling you all, they're going to make you become more and more stupid in your dealing spiritually. Stop it. You have, if you save, you learn something to you. If you're not save, you keep doing it. It is foolish to believe that after you've been given every 
you, not, you didn't receive 10%. It says you were blessed with spiritual, every spiritual blessing, every, all, all of the blessings that come from this throne, as you call it, of Yahweh, you have. And you're asking some man to lay hands on you because you feel spiritually weak. No, you're not spiritually weak, you're just ignorant. And that's what I'm here to speak to you today. I'm here to address some of you who are saints. So you can understand, you can learn that certain things must not proceed from your mouth any longer. That's it, Sister Pedal. Every Sunday they're going to, to rededicate. There's one name I like to do that. Every Sunday you go to rededicate your life to the Lord. He always calling for an altar call. Rededicate. You had a hard week. Come, rededicate your life. What foolishness is this? What nonsense are you people behaving with? This has to stop at some point. It wouldn't stop from you. Yates, there's no, no one, Amen is not a name. Amen is a, is a Hebrew term for so let it be or it is so. So no one in the Bible is called Amen. Now, once you understand or have an inkling of underst to understand who Yahweh is, sovereign one, ruler, ultimate creator, the one who is above all else, all others, once you understand that, and he says, from where I am, I've given you this spiritual blessing. All of them. It means then that when you're walking in the earth, your focus must never be on that which is temporary. I'll help you with this if I can now. Watch this. When you've been given spiritual blessing you function exclusively by divine principles and law somebody's about to be free now when you've been given spiritual blessings you function exclusively by divine principles and law that's the functionality anything else makes it dysfunctional so watch this when you put your hand to do business and you've been given spiritual blessing in heavenly places, it means then that your functioning in business is exclusively by divine principles and law. Which means that your potential for success in earth is far above anyone who doesn't have what you have. Oh, this is good. This is going to help. This is going to free some of you today. I can, I can see it already. Praise you, Father. And so, what's the law? What's the law that makes most of you get hurt in business as well? If Yahweh... says that whatever you sow that you will reap when you put your hand to the business you'll function by divine law and divine principles so if you sow malpractice in business because you have you've been given spiritual blessings you can only reap malpractice from business did i hurt you i hope i did if you sow bad principles in business because of who you are, you will never succeed in it. You cannot, Yahweh will ensure that you will never succeed by malpractice in business. You will never do bad businesses and succeed as a saint. Because whatever you put your hand to do, he's saying to you, I have given you the ability to prosper. You need a separate broadcast. Sancho, you see? Now Sancho is asking for a separate broadcast again now. <laughs> Your Magnus girl, she's in trouble. She gets you in trouble. <laughs> so when Yahweh says, I have given the ability to prosper. You can only prosper by divine principles and law. The divine principle is that if you sow bad, you can never reap good. If you sow good, you can never reap bad.
You function exclusively by divine principles and law. If you are untrustworthy and you enter business, Yahweh will ensure that you do not succeed. Why? Because there's the divine law attached to it. The way of the wrongdoer is hard. As long as you're doing wrong, the, the principle is that your life will be hard. That's it, Brother Brent. Every word of Yahweh is flawless. So now watch the difference. When you enter into business and you function by divine order, divine principles, divine law, you will succeed and nobody can stop you. Nobody could block your business as a saint. But your focus is never on succeeding in an earthly environment. Your focus is on my life is hid in Messiah. My life is hid in Yahweh. I have been given every spiritual blessing to function. And as a result of that, then my functionality is not based on, on, on these things around me. It's based on who's, what was given to me. So I can function efficiently in earth because of what I was given by heaven. Please type this one right here because this might give some a heart attack. The other thing that you make you suffer in that is this. When you're functioning by spiritual principles, it is never by comparison, it's by conviction. I say it again. When you're functioning by spiritual principles, it is never about comparison, it's about conviction. Most of you think you're feeling because you compare yourself to somebody else in business or somebody else in marriage or somebody else in whatever area or a job. When you're functioning by spiritual principles, it is never about comparison. It's about conviction. What happens inside of you? What have you been convicted about? That's how you know you're successful. It's not as if this person is in business and they have a, a cash flow of, 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 of 2,000 US dollars per week or per day and you're only making $100 per day so you, you're not successful. No, 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 no. When you are, when you are functioning by spiritual principles, it is always about conviction. That's what it's about. And your conviction is always that you are positioned by your father to, in a spiritual manner to prosper. You don't look at somebody else and say, I'm doing better than this one, I'm doing better than this one, she's doing better than me, so I have to hook up with her to get better. It doesn't work like that in the kingdom of heaven. You do not connect based on success. You connect based on spiritual truth. I think Pastor Mel spoke to that all week she'll be saying to you all. You do not connect with anybody because they look successful. You connect with people because of spiritual truth. What state are they in spiritually? Not, not if they're succeeding. Not if they're failing. Because a spiritual person who has all spiritual blessing will never be a failure in the earth. Ne it's impossible. Even if they have a small business, the, the execution in that environment will always be classic, will always be flawless, will always be above par, beyond the norm. That's so clicks of form, Sister Pep. You have never been empowered to prosper like somebody else. That's never what the scripture said. You've, you've been given all spiritual blessings. That's what you have. You've received all spiritual blessings. You have got some major downloads from heaven inside of you. I, there's nothing within me that makes me look to some other apostle or brother or sister whoever and say, oh, I'm not preaching like him, I'm not preaching like this one, I'm not as successful as this one. 
I, there's nothing in me to do that because my, I, I've learned by Yahweh's grace that my success is not about another person. I don't look to men to determine my state of, of, of well-being. I do not even compare myself to people spiritually because it doesn't make any sense. I have been given everything I need now to function spiritually now. And for as long as my focus is on that, I'm never a failure. So look at this. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. Everyone. Every one of them. And this, where did it come from? In heaven. Where is it positioned? In heaven. Where are you positioned? In heaven. Though you are on the earth, there's a, a position that you have. Some of you don't understand that, so I'll help you to understand it. If the prince of Dubai, one of the princes, he's in Dubai, he gets in a plane on one of his, 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 his jets and he flies all across the Atlantic and the other oceans and lands in Guyana or the US or wherever you are. Is he still a prince? It's not a stupid question. And you know the answer. Yes. He's still a prince. Of where? Prince of where? Dubai. Exactly. So, this prince, although he is in Guyana, or although he is in the USA, he is still positioned in, he's still positioned in Dubai. He's not positioned in the US. You get that? So though we're living in the earth, our positioning is not from the naughty perspective. We are positioned in Yeshua. Say somebody in the US says, says I don't know who you are, you're nobody, I don't respect you. It doesn't change his position. It exposes their ignorance of who he is. It reveals their ignorance. It doesn't change his position. He's always positioned as prince. They are ignorant of who he is. It doesn't change his position. It, it reveals their ignorance of who he is. So when people look at you, and people do not know who you are, it doesn't change your position. It reveals their ignorance of who you are. What this? His position is in trouble if the leader his father says, you are banished. You are not my son because you've been disrespectful. Now we have a problem because his position has been changed. So for as long as your father in heaven has got a particular statement over your head that you've been positioned in Messiah then that's how you function rethink if you do not adjust what's happening up here you're going to have many days of sorrow that you should not have hence the rebuke is coming in a minute I told you that it's coming to you in a second now verse 4 You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heaven in the Messiah. Look at this. In the Messiah, he chose us in love. My goodness. Before the creation of the universe, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. In the Messiah, he chose us. You can't miss this. Not in church. Not in a denomination. Not at the altar. Not when you decided anything. In the Messiah, Yahweh chose us. Before the creation of the universe. To be holy and blameless in his presence. 
How much more of this y'all can take? How much more of this you can handle? In the Messiah, Yahweh chose you before the world was formed. Yes, there's no difference between capital A and common A. Nobody's called Amen. I say to you again, it is not a name. It is a term that simply means it will be so. Okay? All right. So, before the world was formed, Yahweh selected you in somebody. And then, you are manifested in the earth to walk. Shalom Apostle T, good to see you. When you're walking in this earth, understanding, that's why I said this happens up here now. When you're walking in the earth, understanding what I've just said to you, how can you have days, weeks, or moments of depression? How? Where does it come from? What about Yahweh or your position in Yahweh requires depression or produces it? What? If we don't know, we are at the rebuke phase right here and right now. Why is it as a saint? Can I expound on blameless? Yes, now I can surely do that. You've been chosen by Yahweh to be blameless. And keep, keep in mind my question about, about depression here. Before the world was formed, Yahweh made the decision that you'll be one who's blameless. Meaning, I shall attach to you something called righteousness. Not from you, from someone who gives it to you, which is Yeshua. So he said, once you believe, in Yeshua, then, then, then it means you are righteous. You are also considered what is called justified by faith. Once you believe that Yeshua is the one who makes me righteous, you are justified, meaning you are guiltless. Where does the trouble come? The trouble comes once you, do, once you function in a manner that says, we said this last week, I have to act in a certain way or my behavior makes me righteous. Not my position makes me righteous. Your conviction makes you righteous, not your, be not your behavior. Because out of conviction will come your behavior. If you are convicted and convinced that you were chosen before the world was formed to be blameless, more than likely, more likely than not, you'll be, you'll be doing the right things. If you're convinced that your spiritual, your spiritual well-being has been positioned in a manner that you, are, you have everything you need to function, then people can't throw you off track easy for you, to be, to, for you to do wrong. Additionally, if you do wrong, Yahweh is so powerful, just to keep you righteous, he said, I have an advocate beside me called Yeshua the righteous. Just to keep you righteous. Just to keep us as saints righteous, he positions somebody beside him who's a consistent attorney on your behalf. Just to keep you righteous, he positioned righteousness beside him and said, well, as long as you petition on her behalf, she's always righteous. Blameless. Bless you now. But, the, but, 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 there may be a behavior of, of some sort in the earth that speaks to wrongdoing. What has Yahweh done? He's positioned people in the earth to tell you stop. And your computers do that. Your cars do that. Your phone does it. It's called a repair. It can repair itself and begin to function properly again. It doesn't stop being an iPhone. It doesn't stop being a, a, my, like my phone, a Note 10. It doesn't do that. Note 10 Plus, it doesn't do that. It repairs itself and it continues being what it is. I, could help, I hope I can help on you all today. It repairs the problem and it continues being what it is. Did you get that? 
it fixes the problem and it continues to be what it is. You are lost thinking about the problem instead of thinking about who you are. You're busy arguing over what you should be, in, what, 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 what people say you're doing and all that instead of focusing on who you are. Who am I? I am blameless in Yahweh. My behavior at this moment isn't right. Rebuke. Okay, fix and move forward. That's how righteousness functions. If you can't function like that, you're a rebel and you need to be rebuked. Now back to my other rebuke. <laughs> Why could, how could you be positioned in righteousness and your head says, and your head is telling you that you having this moment in which you are unloved, unwanted, failing, and all the rest of it. How? Shalom Apostle Josh, how? How can you be depressed as a saint? And Apostle Joshua and Nita White and those other me, uh, uh, Bran, I'm sorry. Apostle Stephen, me, Nita White and her daughter Lisa had a major issue for this. Because we both told her, Apostle Stephen and I, that you are wrong. You can never be a saint and tell me function, but you, you, you take pills for depression. Are you crazy? And we must submit to her error instead of proclaim the truth. That's what they wanted. And we said we're not having it, of course, of course, bad friends, of, among other things. It is not happening. You can never tell me that you have been chosen in someone who is flawless, all-powerful. He positioned you himself in his son, and he says you're going to prosper from here. And you say that you have depression, and you need medication for depression. As a saint, how can you do that? How can you justify that as a saint? As a saint, if you understand your position and you rethink, you would never be depressed. You would never be depressed. Most of you who suffer depression, it happens because of something called external influence that you accept. And you could type that and carry it to the bank. Most of you, if not all of you, suffer depression. You suffer it because of external influence that you accept. I'm talking to you as a saint. When you are depressed, it's because there's some external influence that you accept. It is never coming from Yahweh. You believe it. You accept it. Some clown tell you something, you hold on to that because after all, he or she has so much power that it can affect how you function. No! You can never understand a saint you and tell me that you're depressed. Never. It may be a fleeting thought, but it doesn't reside within you. So O'Neill, Vanessa, you wanted to sing, this is easy to say. No, it's truthful to say. And if you're new to my broadcast, you need to hear me sing to you. It is truthful to say, not about easy or hard. Righteous people function by the truth, not what is easy or what is hard. And for O'Neill, nobody can make me depressed. I say to you again, no creature on this planet can make me become depressed. Why? Because you don't have the liberty. Is that easy or hard to say? It's the truth. Nobody can make me become depressed. Because I function by a principle. And the principle is that my position, whatever happens around me, is that I am within something called the will of my Father in heaven, Yahweh. What can you do to, me, to make me depressed, if I understand that? Nobody has that power. If you say things to me, that are inaccurate or stupid, I dismiss you. You don't have that kind of space in my head. 
and someone new wife, husband, whatever you are, I need to hear him saying to you. Even with your spouse, do not permit them to have that degree of influence over your thought processes. If they're saying things to you that are unjust, that are crazy, that are out of whack, do not allow them to, to proceed down a path where they have that degree of control over, over your mind. Don't do it. You dismiss that environment. It is not, I'm not accepting this. I'm not sitting in this. When you understand your position in reference to who your father is, in reference to who you are in relation to him, how could people make you become depressed by what they tell you? Type these three words, and they may save your life. And as Sanchez said, there's another broadcast you have to do about this one too. It is called Deal With It. Three words, type them. Deal With It. Type that please. Because half of you not be depressed if you understand what I'm saying to you now. Type the three words. Deal with it. That is why you're failing. That's why emotions are all over the place. Because you don't, you don't know how to do that. You are, in, you are either unwilling or afraid. If someone says what you don't like, deal with it. I don't care who the person is. And it doesn't mean you be snobbish and stupid. It means you approach the matter and you, you make it known. You said this, I, this has made me feel this way, can we speak to this? That's how you deal with it. If the person doesn't want to talk about it, you've dealt with it. Because they've revealed to you they don't intend to address it. So you move on. Most of you are depressed because of things you've refused to deal with. And people you refuse to deal with. Deal with it. If you fear men, you don't want to deal with it. Whoever you fear, you don't want to address. So because you can't address this person, you're in trouble. Deal with it. If you're a wife... You have a problem with your husband, deal with it. A husband with a problem with your wife, deal with it. Whatever it is, deal with it. Whatever that it is, that as you in a place whereby you're beginning to feel because depression creeps upon you, you begin to lose that comfort. You begin to lose that quietness you have and you begin to feel unstable, deal with it. Don't give it two months or two weeks. Deal with it now. Deal with it. Watch this. You type another three words, but don't rush to type this one. As long as you've exhausted all righteous means, hear me, for as long as you've exhausted every righteous means of dealing with, with it, and it doesn't stop, now you type the other three. Now, please hear me. You other miss the first part. This is live, so you can't say it and say it. It's recorded here. For the first, you deal with it first. Next step. For as long as you've exhausted every righteous means to solve the problem and it's not stopping, next step, depart from it. Meaning you leave it, walk away. Leave it alone. Do you understand the sequence? I didn't say deal with it and leave it. You deal with it, which is where you, you present it, you confront it. If you've done everything righteous now, and it's still not stopping, the person has no, no sign of curbing this behavior, whatever else it is, next thing you do is depart from it. And that one, you fear more than the first one. Bless you, Mel. Bless you, heart. Depart from it. You're not going to sit around all the time and have people trample on, on, your, on, your, on your feelings, trample on your thoughts, trample on principles that are divine. And you keep accepting it.
And I'm not saying here, in, 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 some you start divorce, divorce, divorce. No, 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 no. Depart from it if you marry, doesn't mean you divorce a person. It means that you take an established position that unless this changes, we're not moving forward. You can hop all you want, buy plane ticket, buy cruise tickets, buy dinner ticket, you can do what you want. But once this right here is not dealt with, we're not moving from here. I have departed from this. So for us to move forward, you have to address the it that I brought to you. Many of you are afraid to do that because you're not functioning by exclusively divine principles and law. If you have spiritual blessings that came from heaven, then your function in the earth will be filled with divine principles and law. And Yahweh has never given you a law that says that you run away and hide and tuck it in the sand because you're scared of somebody. He has never given you that order to live by. Never. Never. And if you have been given spiritual blessings and Yahweh has said you are equipped to function, how then can you not having money drive you to a state of depression? Because I'm I'm, this is not about, about man or woman here. I'm talking to some of you now on a different scale. How could you not having money drive you to depression? When did heaven say you'll have a lot of money to function? Someone is asking a question, who is this? Cleveland Harley Quinn. It's like understanding your why to deal with the what. That's good. Exactly. Yahweh has never said you're going to have a lot of money to function. And again, I'm saying to you, you, you have a, a gross misconception of what it is to be successful. Even being successful financially has nothing to do with having a lot of money. It does not. If you're able to live your life understanding that you never have as a saint in a community of saints. Now this one is big for some of you here now. As a saint in a community of saints. I hope the broadcast is clear. And some of you all could hear me when I'm saying to you this afternoon. If you are a saint, Acts chapter 2 verse 5. He's chapter 2, sorry, in Acts chapter 5. Two chapters. If you're a saint, in a community of saints, you can never in the earth have a need that cannot be met. Ooh. I hope you'll be all right after this. If you are a saint in the community of saints, you can never have a need in the earth that cannot be met. Never. It's impossible. Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 5. In Acts chapter 2 it states, when they were all filled with Ruach HaKadosh, with Yahweh's spirit now. So they have, the, that's, that's the full endowment you have to receive all spiritual blessings. Once you have that, watch this. The people look at each other without saying a word and recognize that there were those among them who had need. Don't get away of the broadcast. Stay here now. Don't move. Don't move now. Stay right here. In Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, I mean, the feast was about to be manifested and mature now in our face. There was a sound of a mighty rushing wind, the appearance of fire. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in unknown languages and all the rest of it. Good. Now, the people who were all full of Holy Spirit looked at each other and recognized without saying a word that there were those among them with a need. Don't run. Once a saint is in the community of other saints, you can never have a need that cannot be met. 
because Holy Spirit is who would be uniting that community. And once they recognize that there's a need for you, they'll, they'll meet it. So the people saw there was a need. The people react, reacted to that need instantly. Watch this. Those who had lands, plural. Houses, plural. Sold it. So that the needs of those who didn't have can be met. You've heard that message preached forever. And hopefully you can hear something today that you've never heard before that will trigger rethinking in you to a whole new place. Watch this. It means then that every person who was present never had a need that went beyond houses and land. <laughs> this is going to help you today. Watch this. Because when you are full of Holy Spirit, you never have excessive desires. You are greedy if you need more than clothing, shelter, and food. Type that. You are greedy if you require more than food, clothes, and shelter. So Holy Spirit in the givers was also Holy Spirit in the recipients. And those who are receiving from the givers never said we wanted more than you can give to us. Because Holy Spirit fills you with something called contentment. Who is Noel? Noel, I got somebody doing, doing push-ups on the, on the broadcast. <laughs> this girl and these gifts. When Holy Spirit is present in you, He gives you the ability to be grateful. And to understand what need is. If you require more than food, clothes, and shelter, you're a greedy person. In Acts 5, the saints again were praying. The place shook. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Next thing they did, they turned around. They saw people with a need without saying a word. And they began to meet that need. It never exceeded that which was given. Desi Titika, thank you so much. So when Yahweh has you as a saint, position among other saints, it's an announcement that all you ever need is found in the circle of saints. You don't jump outside of that and go looking to wicked heathens and devils for that which you think saints can give you. You have been given everything spiritually. And once you have everything spiritually, the material things never move to the point where you become depressed for not having them. For as long as you have everything spiritually, material things never, never move you to a place where you become depressed if you don't have it. Some of you do not know, most of you do, but others are new to the broadcast. You don't know because you have a perception of preachers that, don't, that doesn't apply to me. Most of you believe that because I'm a preacher, I have a salary from the church. I say this to you every so often for you to note, note, not know, note me in reference to how I function. Take note. I have never received a salary from a church since 2012. Never. Since 2012. 
to this date, I have never received a salary and I've been preaching full time as your pastor and your pastor and all them did. And I have never been paid a salary from a church. Never. Testimony number one. Witness number two. I have never had a need over nine years that has never been met. Never. Never. I'm not a salaried pastor. But those of you who hate me, don't, for some reason, you, do not, you, don't, you don't ever repeat this part about my life. And I know why. I don't receive tithes and offering as a salary. I've never had a pastor's birthday celebration. I've never had a pastor's anniversary celebration where some preachers come and preach and say, you have to bring money, you have to bring money, and then the money comes to me. I know of many who do it. I have never done it. Never. For nine years, and I've never received a salary. And I've never had any that was not met. Never. And they are saints, saints, not heathens, saints who will rebuke me if I ever have need of something, don't tell them. They'll be angry. They are saints in the world who have committed and said that because of your position of righteousness, we will always do whatever we can to ensure that you're okay. My sisters are here. Brothers are here. And I'm grateful to you because you understand what I just said in that you, you have a position where you can see that someone who is highly qualified in the sciences has been called to speak to you. And that's what my life is about. Only a pastor's appreciation Maybe you have to bring money. I've never had those things. Never. And I'm saying this to you for a reason. You are seeing a person who has never for over... For, I left a job in the Bahamas where the government was paying my rent in the Bahamas. Maybe you could talk about this too. I was being paid a salary and my rent was paid. I never had to pay house rent. That was the terms on which I was employed in the Bahamas. I walked away from it to preach without having a salary. And if you know about Bahamas, the, the exchange rate is one to one US dollars. My wife was also working in the Bahamas, so both of us were employed. We both left it. And I've committed our lives to this. And you telling me you can't understand. You cannot comprehend. Some of you wouldn't. How can I function in this manner? Because I understand that if I am positioned in a certain place spiritually, then things don't matter to me. My children have never had a, meet, a need that has not been met. They've, there's never been a day in their lives where they have never had food to eat. Or they had to skip two or three meals. Never. Never once. Because Yahweh is faithful. And when you understand how to rethink, then things... Things do not ever move it to that extent. Never. My encouragement to you, because we'll have the other parts of it. This. This, this is just the introduction to this. When you've been chosen, rethink. It's a series we're doing. This part number one. When you are able to rethink, then the world as you see it is a place in which you are Living, but not positioned. And just for those who missed last week, we, the, Christ, the scripture says we have been positioned in heavenly places in Messiah 
And we have been chosen before the world was formed to be blameless and to be holy. And all of this happened in Yeshua. Therefore, I am just living in the earth, but positioned in another place. So there's nothing that you can wave in front of me that make me get excited. Because I'm not excited about where I'm living. I'm excited about where I'm positioned. I'm not excited about where I'm living. I'm excited about where I am positioned. I am not excited about where I am living. I'm excited about where I am positioned. As a saint, I pray that you adopt the same approach. And think about where you are positioned. Stop with this depression. Get over it. It is not an attribute for any saint to possess. I bless you, saints. And as Yahweh would have done, I remind you of the blessing that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing would you do me a favor share this broadcast with other saints so they can hear and they can also be encouraged to rethink reposition what happens up here and move beyond these little trivial things in the earth that matter to you when you are positioned in a place and you've been given everything from that place to make you absolutely successful in the earth I love you, saints. I love you all. I am so grateful that you have been chosen to serve Yahweh and that I have been chosen to serve you as well in reference to preaching the truth that would certainly, when you know it, make you free. Blessings and shalom to all of you. Do well. Do well. <laughs> you are listening, Cat Cat. <laughs> bless and a nurse said on what for a bit. Bless you. Wow. See that? You're in hospital and a nurse, a nurse found you and listened to the, to the message. I hope that she was or he would have been encouraged by it. All right. I love you all. Blessings. Blessings. Be encouraged. See you again soon. Only you, Novella. <laughs> Bless y'all. Amen. Bless you, son. Love you, my sister Shanir and others. I love you all. Bye-bye.